want to talk about procrastinating because it's an important one relating to whether you mix out or business or whatever. Um, because one of the big things that frustrates me in business is dithering. I hate it. I hate people that are indecisive. And one of the things that often happens is they'll push it over here under the cabinet and it will sit there until eventually I turn up and sort out their mess. And this happens with the NHS. Many government organizations do this all the time. Um, what it is, is nobody wants to take responsibility of decision making. So they just put it right to the bottom of the pile, sort of wedging, just, you know, just holding the table up. You know, that, that <laughs> couldn't get any lower. Yet, a lot of this stuff is very critical. In life, this is the same. When you put stuff off, and you're probably thinking, you just said you put the stuff off on the gym. There's a reason for that, because I'm not physically here. That's <laughs> the important thing. Um, but the, the point being is, one of the things I've had here is the weather's been pretty dire, which is where I've got a few kilos on here, because um, we've gone out to restaurants instead of me going out for fitness, and I recognize it, and it, that's why I'm doing something about it. I've locked into, I will join the gym and do something about it. But you will find there's many things in your life that you are holding back because you're refusing to accept them. Divorces, failed relationships, or or relationships that you're just cohabiting and existing in without actually having anything there. Those are things that often it's an acceptance of outcome. The acceptance is you're divorced and the end of the life is coming. Your end of a bad relationship may not want another relationship because that one hurt you so bad. Or it could be the fact that you're just going in and out of the house trying to avoid each other because the mortgage is so much. They're not living. They're existing. And what you need to do is push past that. If you're divorced, recognize it. Deal with it. Move past it. What can you do to fix it? That is moving off the focus of you're divorced and somebody's leeching your money or whatever and focus on what you can fix and some of it you can keep off the tax radar, etc. It's dealing with the problem. Same with cohabiting stuff. Do you really want to sit in the house with somebody that you can't stand for the next 25 years until the mortgage is paid? The answer to that, I can guess, is no. So it may be time to find an exit strategy. And I'm not telling you what your exit strategy is because at the end of the day, you need to make that decision yourself. But one of the biggest problems people have these days is they do not deal with problems too well. Debt is another one. Debt is where people often will go, okay, I paid, paid my installments this month and I'm going to go shopping and make myself all happy again. And then when the bill comes in at the end of the month, there's that depression for the afternoon and I'm going to make myself happy. Get out of this cycle. You're doing the same thing. Recognize your problem. I've had this same conversation with, well, my sister. <laughs> She's like, yeah, but I like these. I like clothes. I like this. And I'm like, you need to bring your money back in order. It's all right to not blow money like no tomorrow. There is always tomorrow. The ultimate thing here is controlling your your destiny and starting dealing with decisions that actually help rather than hinder. Myself, I've got a trip coming up, it's paid for. Bang, just went to the bank, took it. Got the car, bang, went and paid for it. Moved house, bang, paid in cash. I do not have a credit card. I do not have any debt. I've got zero debt. Everything is paid for in cash. And when I'm um, sat here, like, as I said, the crypto markets have changed a little bit. I do not sit here going, oh, what am I going to do now and worry about it. I focus on wake up, reboot, get things moving. If, you, if this is not working now, move on to something else. And this is why some people will say you, you move from one thing to another. The answer to that is things move at a different pace. But ultimately, because I can keep all these plates spinning, um, I make money in different directions because some stuff takes ages to get going, other stuff is only short term, other things are quite simply longer term to learn. 
But ultimately, what you're trying to do is keep things flowing. Because if you're flowing, you're moving in the right direction. Um, I mean, when I talk about the call center and stuff, you've got to realize I did not want locked in to one location. I like having the call center in the Philippines, but it cannot be run if I'm not there. People cannot be trusted. And it'd be nice to have somebody capable of running it for me. But ultimately, the market changed as well. So with that, I recognize the fact that the business model is no longer functional. It's functional as a support service. It's functional for coding, etc. It's functional as a computer environment. But finding the right people to work in there is the hard bit. But I sit there and go, you know what? Mothball that. Come back to that later. Why? Because there is no easy solution for that. People will go, oh, well, I want to do this, I want to do that. Call centers, there's been a lot of changes in recent years. And ultimately, having those facilities, I have other needs and uses for it later on. There's other stuff that's a priority, and I can come back to that. But that's another part of it, is recognizing I can't fix this now, move past it. Move on to something you can do. Um, there's no point trying to lift a, a giant boulder with a stick when it needs a JCB. Um, just recognize you need to move things forward. And with this, a lot of problems people have is they get stuck in the same cycle. If you're in debt, write all the debt down. What is it? How much is it monthly? What's the total cost? What are you currently paying? Can you pay more? Because the quicker you pay it off, the less interest you pay. And the less interest you pay, this the way you should see things is a bit like me. When I go and buy a car, that is probably cost as much as your interest in the last three years that you've given away. You've given to the banks, you've given to whoever. The point being is, that's how I deal with finances. I do not like banks. I, their function is parasitical. Their, the decentralization on crypto is a prime example of what's come out of their mortgage scams and shams. Um, but the, the point being is bankers look after themselves. They promote this family-friendly environment, but it's not what they're doing. When you can't pay, you're out there. You're in the streets. They would rather your house was empty than you were living in it. But anyway, recognize these things, but ultimately do not get stuck in a rut. You need to get those wheels moving. So whatever it is, you know, if it's debt, recognize the debt, get it paid, start looking and get, getting off your plate. If it's work in the sense that you're doing a lot of work and it's not really worth it, and there's other opportunities out there you could be doing, look at your options. You should be doing this continuously anyway. It's part of continuous development. It's part of personal development. It's progression. When I work for corporations, the directors are the one entity I would say have the least interest in the business than anybody else in these companies because their only development is personal development. They are selfish, greedy parasites. Very few of them actually care about the company. Um, they are more concerned about lining their pockets and the next job. I realized this a long time ago when I could see a shift in a business model where everybody started looking at the next job. But when I started working with Krillium, they started revolving around the next contract. So even though, like, say you worked on this contract, which was for the NHS, and you're the director, and you're on a two-year contract, internally, it's very likely you're going to transfer it within four months. But now on your CV, you've had time at the NHS, and that goes on your CV that you worked at the NHS, da da da, because you don't need to put the time frames, you see. You just take all these little corporate names, all these little logos, and stick them on your CV that you worked for the Ministry of Defense, the NHS, whoever, whoever, and then you constantly try and move around, because then you'll try and get to another company in the same um, arena. That's what goes on. And this is what, the reason I'm bringing this up is the relevance is, these are the what, this is what people are doing to get on in life, is they're quite simply recognizing the opportunities and taking them. Doesn't matter that they're very incompetent, we recognize that. That's not something we can come, uh, do anything about because they're already in a, a position, they've already wormed their way up there. 
But the, the thing is, there's nothing to stop you excelling as well. And yes, you're probably going to be worth more um, because you actually know what you're doing. But ultimately, it starts with not pausing, but moving. Thanks for watching.